After 26 years, DC Comics reached to close Vertigo. Well, you assholes have no one to blame but yourselves. So this article, uh, on Bleeding Cool, written by Rich Johnson, uh, reports that Vertigo is going to be closing sometime in the near future. Okay, so, in the article it says, Bleeding Cool has been informed by a number of sources this morning that DC Comics is planning to shutter its Vertigo imprint. Uh, it's a real shame, some really great comics have come out of Vertigo. Uh, not a, any good comics that I can mention as of late. But um, in the past, it's got some. It's had some really great titles. This has come as quite a surprise to some, as I also understand that DC Comics has just greenlit a number of Vertigo projects for publication. Indeed, there are plans for a big launch of new books for San Diego Comic Con, spearheading a new Vertigo thing. It says, but I have been told that word has come from on high rather rapidly to make the change. Some contracts are being revoked, some creator-owned titles released back to their creators, and some will be moved within the publisher. And those affected are being informed. Vertigo was created in 1993 by senior DC editor Karen Berger as a publishing imprint for DC stories with more graphic or adult content that could not fit within the restrictions of the Comics Code Authority, thus allowing more creative freedom than DC's main imprint. These comics were free to contain explicit violence, substance and drug abuse, sexuality, nudity, profanity, and other controversial subjects similar to the content of R-rated films. Uh, DC was already publishing titles such as Animal Man, Hellblazer, Sandman, Swamp Thing, and Doom Patrol in this fashion. Vertigo provided a banner for these and many more titles to come. I she read Hellblazer, uh, started reading Sandman, I read some of Swamp Thing, but I have not read Doom Patrol or Animal Man. Uh, how Vertigo changed things for the better. Although its initial publish publications were primarily in the horror and fantasy genres, it is also published where it's with crime, social commentary, speculative fiction, biography, and other genres with a mix of company and creator own work. It pioneered the now com coming publishing model in which some series are periodically comp comprised. Blah, blah, blah. Vertigo series of note, as well as the above, includes Sandman, Preacher. I actually did read Preacher. It's a good series. Why the Last Man? One of my favorite all-time um, indie comics. Um, well, it's owned by DC, so it's not really indie, but still, it's a great um, series. And Trails for Tripolitan. I have not read that. I've been recommended that numerous times, but I still haven't read it. And Fables. Love Fables. Several of its publications have been adapted as films, including Constantine and Stardust, as well as TV shows Constantine, I Zombie, Lucifer Preacher, Doom Patrol, and Swamp Thing. Uh, it has also been used uh, to retrospectively house titles such as Watchmen, A History of Violence, and V for Vendetta, all made into films. Uh, when things started to go south. Vertigo has suffered a number of blows in recent years. A uh, proud presentation amongst Warner Brothers Vice Presidents, then Chairman Alan Horn asked why more Vertigo series weren't being turned into TV shows and movies. Being told that this was because money were creator owned, he demanded changes to the contracts that saw bankable stars such as Warren Ellis, Grant Ennis, uh, Garth Ennis, Grant Morrison, and Neil Gaiman look elsewhere for new work and better deals. With subsequent contractual changes, only making things worse. As part of the re reorganization of DC Comics, the imprint lost the rights to use DC Comics established characters such as Swamp Thing and Doom Patrol, though they kept Hellblazer going for a short while. The firing of Karen and Shelley. As part of those re reorganizations, DC Comics placed Vertigo under editorial control of Hank Canals and Bob Harass, effectively demoting Vertigo founder and senior editor Karen Berger, who previously reported directly to the publisher and president Paul Levitz, though there were often issues there. Soon after, she was fired by DC Comics. After a period of gardening leave, uh, she set up Berger Books at Dark Horse, drawing on much of the Vertigo tone she had nurtured at the imprint. 
Nisi would also fire her successor, Shelly Bond, who would do likewise setting up Black Crown and IDW. There's some good titles of Black Crown. That's uh, something you guys should check out. Punk's Not Dead. I've uh, recommended that numerous times. That's over there. Oversight of Vertigo was placed under James S. Rich until Mark Doyle became the current senior editor. Other publishers stepped up their creator-owned game with better deals and greater publishing, greater publicity, including Image Comics, Star Horse, Oni Press, Boom Studios, and more. It has been notable that even a launch title from the likes of Vault and Black Mask can double or triple the launch of a new comic from Vertigo. There has been talk of a Vertigo taint in the eyes of retailers, which not even the recent Sandman Presents could counter. There is definitely a Vertigo taint, especially after what comes next. The 2018 relaunch that fizzled. Yeah, this was bad. This was very bad. Me and my friends make so many jokes about this, it's not even funny. Well, the jokes themselves were funny, but what happened with Vertigo is not. A recent relaunch last year, alongside the Sandman titles, saw the announcement of Border Town, which is god-awful, by Eric Esquivel and Ramon Villalobos, canceled in December after four published and two unpublished issues after harassment allegations against Esquivel. A uh, second coming by Mike Russell and Richard Pace, that also looked to be awful, uh, canceled before its debut over content concerned, finding a new home at Ahoy Comics. Hexwise, which was awful, by Ben Blacker and Rock. Andolfo, which ended after six issues, American Carnage by Brian Hill and Leonardo Fernandez. That actually was pretty good. I actually enjoyed that. Goddess Mode by Zoe Quinn and Robbie Rodriguez, a book that, if you saw my review of the first two issues, I think actually killed part of my soul. It was so awful. Which has been getting later on the schedules. High Level, which is just terrible, by Rob Sheridan and Barnaby Begata. And the currently unscheduled Safe Sex by Tina Horn and Mike Daly, which looks to be awful. It didn't set the world on fire. Far from it. It looked to be more like a matchstick on a breezy July afternoon. Almost on the verge of going out. And now with this announcement, it seems like it will be going out. At its peak, it was the very best American comics had to offer. But internal politics within Warners and DC Comics saw them kill the golden goose and for some time, now it has been a zombie itself. Yeah, it's, it's definitely undead at this point. Attempts to revive it with Sandman Presents and new titles from prominent names have not succeeded. Uh, the only prominent name I've ever heard of, um, besides Brian Hill, who actually is a good writer, is Zoe Quinn, and Zoe Quinn is only famous for being a victim on the internet. Not exactly the person you want running um, a Vertigo title, someone who has no experience in comics, and only created a shitty video game, if you can even call it that. What happens now? It is likely that titles such as Lucifer and the other titles from the same represents line may continue DC Comics and create their own titles that DC has given up on may find new homes at other publishers. There are also a number of live TV and movie projects based on radio titles such as Survivor's Club that could conceivably keep them published at DC for now at least. Sandman Books will no doubt continue to come out from the publisher as well as Young Animal Books. And there is still the plan San Diego Comic Con launch. Will it be repurposed, changed, dropped, or is it, or is this, or is all of this a lot of bunkum? Weird choice of words. If Vertigo goes hashtag Vertigon, well, that's really stupid. It will be a sad day for many, not just those employed at Vertigo or with books there. Vertigo was the first brand to successfully sell a line of adult-focused comic books into comic stores and bookshops and created its own Vertigo Zombies who would pick up every title. It would take risks but would never but would never losing its focus on commercial appeal. I think there's a typo there. It was never the mere max of comic books and it kept comic book readers sorry, it was the mere the main racks of comic books, they kept comic book readers from quitting once they grew out of superheroes and helped placate those who hadn't grown out of superheroes. DC Comics representative declined to comment when approached today. We will run any developments as and when we are made aware of them. So, yeah, it looks like Vertigo will be coming to an end. Um, if you can believe Bleeding Cool, which I know that we tend to take with a grain of salt, but 
Uh, the Vertigo titles have been really bad. Um, I'm sure you've seen all the live streams and all the videos that were made when these books were announced and all the fun we had mocking them relentlessly. But I didn't think it was going to be bad enough to kill the imprint itself and uh, it looks like I gave them more credit than they were worth. But uh, I will miss Vertigo if it does go out. There were a lot of great titles there and I recommend that you check some of them out. But, you know, this is what happens when you put um, ideology and, you know, politics ahead of good story and actual talent. You get this shit, and it will bite you in the ass from a business perspective. And we are seeing the result of that. So, um, that's it, I guess. If you like this video, remember to comment and subscribe. Share it if you enjoyed it. Um, this has been Mr. E29, and remember, life is always better with a little mystery.